the the main topic the main theme which i have selected for the message is the call of god to move forward the call of god to move forward let us sit in the presence of god with a prayerful attitude so that uh, god may speak to us this morning you know the title is the call of god to move forward amen so i would like to uh, uh, just read that two verses from uh, book of hebrews uh, chapter 13 verses 12 and 13 hebrews chapter 13 verses 12 and 13 so i already i mean requested uh, uh, dear cedric uh, he will be reading the bible verses today because uh, he is having the uh, loud voice okay so it is very very audible and uh, so he is going to read the verses today and uh, i request cedric to read a uh, read uh, hebrews chapter 13 verses 12 and 13 <coughs> Hebrews 13:12 Therefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered outside the gate therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp bearing his reproach amen you no know, actually these verses reminds us about uh, uh, many things like uh, uh, two verses you know about Jesus and about uh, the blood of Jesus Christ and uh, the suffering of uh, i mean jesus christ and sanctification and uh, uh, outside the gate uh, uh, the phrase called outside the gate of camp and also uh, the, the reproach of jesus christ amen so these are the main topics that uh, it is there in that uh, uh, two verses at the same time we are not trying to uh, focus on all those topics but we will be focusing mainly on the suffering of jesus outside the gate and bearing his reproaches on us hallelujah the suffering of jesus outside the gate and bearing his reproach on us amen so the reason that i have picked to this uh, 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 these verses for today's uh, ceremony is actually uh, you know while i was uh, uh, taking the classes for book of hebrews uh, two weeks ago Uh, brother jovins asked me a doubt from uh, this portion this portion means uh, chapter 13 uh, verses 12 and 13 or something and he was asking a doubt from uh, that one and uh, uh, because it is written in that verse that uh, i mean jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people with his blood with his own blood so that was a, that that was a doubt so uh, he was asking why it is written like this and jesus also suffered outside the gate and uh, and in order to uh, sanctify the people of god with his own blood amen so i thought uh, uh, i can clarify that doubt through uh, this message you know uh, this message means that you know even before that i was just thinking about uh, uh, making a message out of this and uh, uh, after uh, joven is asking the question Uh, the doubt i i decided that okay i'll be preaching uh, in the next sunday that uh, about this portion so uh, now uh, i request everyone i request everyone to uh, open your bible and go through those i mean those two verses uh, for 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 few seconds and think about what would be the meaning of those verses i mean i believe that you have the bible with you at, at your home you know even though you're sitting at your home be very very attentive to the word of god be very serious and give reverence to the lord i mean in front of the in front of the word of god and as we are sitting here i just request every one of you to open your bible and read in your maybe in your own language maybe in malayalam or english or hindi or marathi uh, uh, punjabi whatever maybe you can read or telugu i mean in your own language also i mean you can read that verses there itself and uh, i mean find out what would be the meaning of those two verses maybe hebrews chapter 13 verses 12 and 13 praise god now listen i would like to speak something about the context of these verses and how the author is trying to compare the sin offering of the old testament and also the crucifixion of jesus on the cross of calvary 
for the remedy of our sins. I mean, so that's that's my that's my point. You know, I'm trying to I mean uh, make clear about what is the context of these two verses. What is the context of these two verses? I mean, how the author of the book of Hebrews or uh, Apostle Paul is trying to compare the sin offering of the Old Testament. And we are, I know that uh, we uh, might have heard about uh, the, the sin offering of the Old Testament when we were uh, studying book of Hebrews. So uh, we are trying to, I mean, uh, to, to understand what is, the, what is the comparison between the sin offering of Old Testament and the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross uh, for the remedy of our sins. Amen. Hallelujah. So, and uh, uh, don't want to be, uh, if, you, if, you, if you are not able to grasp all, all these points and all those things, uh, uh, don't worry about all those things because uh, uh, you can watch this video again through the YouTube in the uh, up to upcoming uh, days. Amen. So, uh, here the author of the book of Hebrews is trying to make a comparison between the Old Testament sin offering and also the blood offering of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. I mean, it was for the remission of our sins. I mean, Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. Hallelujah. But in the Old Testament, the animals were offered, animals were sacrificed, I mean, instead of the people, I mean, to, to, to forgive their sins. I mean, so that was the, I mean, system and custom of the Old Testament. It was done through the sin offering. It was a sin offering. So let us try to understand the context of these verses and what is the reason that the author is saying to the Hebrews that Jesus also suffered outside the gate. Hallelujah. So this is a good chance for every one of us to, I mean, I mean, think about why the author of this book of Hebrews is expressly saying that Jesus also suffered outside the gate. You know, according to the Old Testament law, the Jewish high priest had to offer a sin offering for the atonement of the sins of the people. So that was the Jewish law that, I mean, those people have to, I mean, bring an animal and the high priest had to offer a sin offering for the atonement of the sins of the people. And the priest could eat the meat of the uh, the, 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 the animals of the sacrifice, but they were not allowed to eat the meat of the sin offering. I mean, so that is, that is what we understand from, uh, from, the, from the history or the law of, uh, I mean, uh, the Old Testament which is given for them. And uh, it is written in uh, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 27. Also, we have to understand one thing, and also bodies of the animals, which is sacrificed as the sin offering, were born outside the gate. Okay, let us read Leviticus chapter 16, verse 27. Then only we will understand what was the uh, what was the main uh, uh, main context of uh, uh, book of Hebrews chapter 13, verses I mean 12 and 13. So we are going to read uh, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 27. The bull for the sin offering and the god for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in holy places shall be carried outside the camp and they shall burn in the fire their skin their flesh and their offal okay so here we can understand from these verses of the old testament it says that and also the bodies of the animals which is sacrificed as the sin offering on the altar were burned outside the camp amen Hallelujah. So those animals, the bodies of the animals were sacrificed, I mean, uh, which was sacrificed in the sin offering, were born outside the gate. I mean, so it was born outside the gate. But here, Apostle Paul says, Jesus also died outside the camp or outside the gate of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So that is what we understand from there. Here Paul says that Jesus Christ also, you know, when the Old Testament sin offering was happening, all those people, or the, the, the high priest, they had to take that, I mean, animal's body outside the gate of Jerusalem, and it should be born outside the gate of Jerusalem. 
And here, Apostle Paul is just trying to compare that sin offering and the offering or the sacrifice of Jesus himself on the cross of Calvary. And he says that Jesus also died, I mean, outside the camp. Jesus also died outside the camp. I mean, outside the camp city or outside the city uh, uh, gate of Jerusalem. Okay, when, uh, when you read, uh, I mean, uh, about uh, uh, Jesus' uh, uh, crucifixion or the death of Jesus Christ, uh, we read in John chapter 19, verse 20. John chapter 19, verse 20, let us read that verse. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Okay, listen. So we read here in this John chapter 19, verse 20, it says that, I mean, the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. That means it was not inside the city of Jerusalem. And also in uh, John chapter 19, verse 17, John chapter 19, verse 70, you read that verse. And, that verse. and, he, began, and he bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of skull, which is called in Hebrews as Golgotha. Amen. So we read there also, Jesus took his own cross and carried it outside the camp. Jesus took his own cross, even he was taking his own cross, and we have to understand every one of our sins were there on the cross of Jesus Christ. And he was dying not for himself, but he was dying for the sins and forgiveness of the sins of the people who are the human being. Amen. So we are here. Jesus took his own cross and carried it outside the camp. You know, Jesus carried the cross for almost, you know, the history says, you know, uh, as after study of the geography, the people say that Jesus carried the cross for almost one and a half hours from Gethsemane to the Calvary, to the Calvary, from Gethsemane to the Calvary, I mean, he took, I mean, he, he was carrying the cross almost one and a half hours, amen? It was not easy to carry the cross for a long time, but Bible says he did it, he did it for all of our sins to be forgiven, hallelujah. Let's thank God for, I mean, that Jesus, I mean, carried the cross of Calvary, cross, I mean, from, I mean, Gethsemane to Calvary, maybe one and a half hours, and he was carrying, and in, in his heart, he was having, he was always thinking that, okay, okay, I have to, I mean, do this because, uh, I mean, the people should be delivered from the bondages of sin, hallelujah. So this is the context of those verses. This is the context of those verses. Now, let us come to the verse 13, verse 13 of chapter 13, book of Hebrews. And it says that, we already read it, okay, we read there, and the writer is saying like this, let us then go out to him outside the camp bearing his reproach. Let us then go outside the camp bearing his reproach. So today, this is the, this is the first call of God to us to go outside the camp bearing his reproach. Hallelujah. Our main theme is, I mean, the call of God to move forward. I mean, we are the people supposed to, supposed to, I mean, go forward according to the call of God. I and mean, God has called every believer, every person to move forward. Hallelujah. We are not supposed to move backward, but we are supposed to move forward. Hallelujah. So if we are going to look into the, these portions that how God called, I mean, God called us to move forward. Hallelujah. What was there when, when God was calling the believers, when God was calling the sinners, I mean, making them as the believers and making them as the children of God. Hallelujah. So the first, I mean, first point is the call of God leads us to our state, the camp. That is in, in verse, I mean, 13 of uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 13. Okay. That, 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 that verse says that, I mean, God is calling every one of us to, uh, everyone wants to go outside the camp, go outside the camp. So the call of God leads us to outside the camp. I mean, uh, 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 how many, I don't know how many of you uh, remember that uh, uh, one Malayalam song is, it says that again, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, most of the, most of the Malayalis, uh, you know that song, hallelujah. 
പാളയത്തിനപ്പുറത്ത് കഷ്ടമേൽക്കുക നാം പാടുപെട്ട യേശുവിന്റെ നിന്ന് നിന്ന് ചുമക്കാം പാളയത്തിനപ്പുറത്തു കഷ്ടമേൽക്കുക നാം പാടുപെട്ട യേശുവിന്റെ നിന്ന ചുമക്കാം പാളയത്തിനപ്പുറത്തു കഷ്ടമേൽക്കുക നാം പാടുപെട്ട യേശുവിന്റെ നിന്ന ചുമക്കാ നിൽക്കും നഗരമില്ലിവിടെ പോർത്തെത്തിലെത്ര നാം നിൽക്ക വേണ്ട പോർപ്പൊരുരു യാത്ര ചൂടാ വേഗം യാത്ര തുടരാ ആമേ നിൽക്കും നഗരമില്ലിവിടെ പോർക്കളത്തിലെത്ര നാൾ നിൽക്ക വേണ്ട പോർപ്പൊരുരു യാത്ര സുടരാ വേഗം യാത്ര തുടരാ അല്പകാലം മാത്രം ഈ ഭൂവിലെ വാസം സ്വർപ്പുരമാണെന്റെ നിത്യമാമ്പീട് എന്റെ നിത്യമാമ്പീട് ആമേൻ അല്പകാലം മാത്രം ഈ ഭൂവിലെ വാസം സ്വർപ്പുരമാണെന്റെ നിത്യമാമ്പീട് എന്റെ Yeah, Amen. Hallelujah. I cannot sing. I mean, a long time because I'm preaching in between. I cannot sing. Hallelujah. Anyway, that, 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 I mean, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, Kastam Elkivanam, Padvata Eshvinde, Ninna Chumaka. Hallelujah. So we are, I mean, I mean, carrying, we are bearing the reproaches of Jesus Christ and we are going, I mean, towards or going out of the city. Hallelujah. You know, this is the call leads us to move forward with the reproaches of Christ outside the camp. Kyam. Hallelujah. Outside the camp. I mean, for Jewish Christians, we have to understand what is the context of that verse. you know the jewish christians always to go outside the camp means i mean leaving jerusalem leaving leaving jerusalem maybe i mean going out of jerusalem leaving the i mean or i mean uh, to go outside the camp means i mean leaving jerusalem or leaving their uh, uh, what to say all the religion or uh, leaving uh, their possessions and also uh, leaving their security and their, all the comfort zone I mean so all the all those people are were in a comfort zone but uh, i mean here i mean the, the writer the apostle paul is saying that you have to go outside the camp which means i mean you have to leave i mean jerusalem i mean you have to leave your i mean city and you have to leave i mean your own religion and your possessions and security and the comfort zone hallelujah and also which speaks about the salvation is not open for not only the jewish people but also for the gentiles hallelujah so jesus was taking the cross and he was not dying inside the city of jerusalem but he was taking the cross from inside to outside that means he was trying to make this possible he was trying to make the salvation possible for all the people not only for the jewish people but also for the gentile people hallelujah that's the reason that we are sitting in the presence of god this morning and we are worshiping god in truth and spirit hallelujah i mean once we were not the people of god once we were not able to i mean praise the name of the lord and once we were not i mean called as the children of god hallelujah but this is a great privilege for the people of god and god has given us to be called as the children of god only through the blood of jesus christ only through the death of, of, of jesus christ on the cross of calvary hallelujah so in order to be obedient to the call of god we are supposed to leave our religion our old religion i mean when he, he says to the jewish people you have to go outside the gate or outside the camp or outside the city that means i mean to to us to the people of god today i mean god, i mean he is speaking that you know we have to we have to leave our i mean old religion we had a we had an old religion the old belief system all the practices all the customs and all the rituals and all the life you know we had everything we had an old religion and all the belief system and all the practices that we were doing all the really i mean rituals and the customs that we were doing in our old life before coming to christ 
you know, we have to think about one thing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there are many in Christendom also, I mean, not willing to leave all those practices because they need always both the world and Jesus together. It's a painful situation that I, I remember, you know, there are many people I know, I know, I mean, personally, I know many people that they are not able to, they are not willing to, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, leave all those old religion and old, I mean, uh, practices or rituals or something, and they are still, I mean, in need of, in need of, I mean, uh, the both the worldly things and also Jesus. They need Jesus, but also they need worldly things. But the people of God, let me tell you this morning that we are not supposed to be, I mean, I mean, seeking or I mean, desiring for the worldly pleasures and Jesus, but we are seeking always the presence of God. Hallelujah. We need Jesus always, I mean, with us. Hallelujah. For the presence of Jesus Christ, I mean, we will be succeeded, I mean, in every area of our life. Hallelujah. So Jesus said in uh, Mark chapter, I mean, Mark chapter uh, 8, verse uh, 34. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Let us read that verse. Also. When he had called the people to himself with his disciple also, he said to them, Whoever decides to come after me, let him deny his, himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever decides to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful verse that we are reading this morning to, to, to confirm that uh, the call of God I mean, is leading us to outside the camp. The call of God is leading us to outside the camp. You know, in this particular verse, it says that if anyone follow me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. He must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Remember, this is a call to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. This is the call, I mean, of God for every person, every believer, every Christian, every members of our church, hallelujah, to, to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And you know, Christians are not following a religion. Have to understand one thing. We Christians, we people of God, we children of God, are not at all following a religion. We do not have a religion, but we have a truth. We have a truth that is Jesus Christ. And we don't have any ideas. Or we don't have any philosophies. I mean, we are not following any political party, but they are following Jesus. Hallelujah. So we don't have all those things, but we are following Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And they may have some, you know, all of the Christians and we, we, we may have some religious belief system. That's true. We may have some religious system, but uh, I mean, and, and we have the ideologies in our life and some uh, philosophical uh, thoughts or some political uh, views. You know, we, uh, uh, each person will be having uh, different views about the political things or the philosophical things. But they are supposed to follow Jesus, even though they are having the ideas and views about many things, many things and many things. But we have to think about, I mean, are we following Jesus in our life and are we ready to go outside the camp and do the ministry of God and are we ready to deny ourselves and do the ministry. Hallelujah. Denying ourselves means give up our own desires. What is the meaning of denying ourselves? Denying ourselves. God has called us to deny ourselves which means give up our own desires and our own pleasures. I mean, and our own plans and commit ourselves in the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. God is always calling the people of God and saying that deny yourself. I mean, give up all your desires, give up all your pleasures of this world and give up all your, your own plans. That, that's what we were reading in uh, I mean, Psalms 37 also. I mean, commit your plans, commit your ways in the hands of God. Commit your ways in the hands of God. God will provide for you. Hallelujah. So that's what we read from this verse also. I mean, we are always, I mean, having our own plans. We are always having our own desires. I mean, but I mean, whenever we surrender our life in the presence of God, whenever we commit ourselves in the mighty hand of God, there comes the blessing. Hallelujah. The more we give up ourselves for the sake of Jesus Christ, the more we receive the spiritual blessings from him. Hallelujah. The more we give up ourselves for the sake of Christ, the more we receive the spiritual blessings 
from him. Hallelujah. So the cross is our own cross. We are bearing our own cross. It is written there. Okay. I mean, take your cross. Take your cross. Means we are not taking the cross of Jesus Christ, but we are taking our own cross. What is the cross of our life? What does it mean? What is the cross of our life? The cross of our life is the sufferings that we have in this Christian life. Hallelujah. So it is not the cross of Jesus because he already carried his cross and died for all our sins. Hallelujah. The cross in our Christian life shows the suffering that we carry in our life. And that doesn't mean uh, uh, that we must bear a, 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 a wooden or golden cross on our body. You know, there are some people, uh, they are wearing uh, the wooden cross or golden cross and they are saying that we are the Christians and we have to show that we are the Christians. That's the reason that we are, I mean, holding or we are just carrying, uh, bearing a, a, a cross which is made by gold or wood. I mean, you know, some people I mean, thinking like that, you know, you know, without that, we cannot show the people that we are a Christian. That never makes sense. Even though you are, you are carrying or you are bearing a wooden cross or golden cross, that doesn't mean that, I mean, you are a Christian. Even though you are not carrying that through your words and through your deeds, let the people know that you are a Christian. Hallelujah. So remember, the call of God will lead us to outside the camp. Hallelujah. The call of God will lead us to outside the camp. Now we come to the second point of my message. The first point was the call of God leads us to outside the camp. The second point is, I mean, the call of God never leads us to worldly prosperity. The call of God never leads us to the worldly prosperity. Listen. Many of the new generation preachers are always preaching only about the prosperity of this world today. And they are preaching always about the security of this world. Even in Psalms also we were reading what is the security of the righteous people and what is the insecurity of the unrighteous or wicked people. But here, listen very carefully. Most of the New generation preachers and pastors, they are always preaching about only, only prosperity of this world. Hallelujah. But I don't preach about only the prosperity of this world. God will provide everything for every person. But we are preaching about the prosperity that we are receiving from the Spirit. Hallelujah. And we are receiving the spiritual blessings from the Lord. Hallelujah. And sure, sure, we have the security. We have the security, worldly I mean, security from the Lord. I mean, hallelujah. You know, I was just thinking, what's the reason that all those people, all those preachers are always, I mean, preaching and giving the messages about the, I mean, prosperity of this world. I, I came to a conclusion that, you know, you know, uh, the preachers like to be wealthy and they need to get the money. They need to get the wealth. Eh? Okay. If the people are blessed materially, then the pastor also, then the, then the, then the believers also, sorry, and then the preachers also will be blessed. So that's the only motive that, that those people are having. But remember, this morning, as you are listening the word of God, hallelujah, that is not our motive, hallelujah. The, the, the worldly pleasures are not our motive. The worldly, I mean, uh, uh, blessings are, the material blessings are not our motive. Our motive is, oh Lord, I need a spiritual blessing, hallelujah. But remember, nobody is secure in this world. Nobody is secure in this world. Hallelujah. And everything that we own from this world will surely become void and useless. Surely, surely that will become, I mean, void and useless. Hallelujah. And we must be ready to come down from our safe zones and secured places and comfort zone and we have to go outside the gate outside the camp. That is the, that's the main message that I would like to share with you this morning. Hallelujah. For example, I mean, you know, when you read Luke chapter 10, verses 30 to 36, when you read Luke chapter 10, verses 30 to 36, there we read about a good Samaritan man. There's, there, there's a good Samaritan. Okay, so uh, we will just read that only one, one verse, 30, 30, only one verse. Then, then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves 
who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Because of the lack of time, we will just I mean, close that verse. Okay. So the, the, here in these verses, we see a man attacked by the robbers. Amen. And they left him on the roadside, half dead. That person is half dead, and they he is I mean attacked by the robbers, and he is I mean in in, in a dangerous situation. And we read there that the priest, one priest is coming and he saw this person but passed by on the other side. Remember, the priest came there and he saw this person and he passed by on the other side. Okay, and the second person is Levite. Is it right? Levite. Okay, the Levite, he also came to that place and he also saw this wounded person and he also just pass by on the other side hallelujah but we read about a samaritan man he came and he felt compassion on him and bandaged his wounds and pouring oil and wine and took care of him hallelujah that's what we read in that portion i mean the samaritan man is coming to this person and he's asking what happened what happened he felt so compassion on the person and bandaged his wounds and he is pouring the oil on his wounds and wine also, and he is trying to, to I mean, take care of that person. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we are also just like the priest and Levite. We are also, we people are also, especially, you know, we, the, 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 the members of the eternal life, church of God, I mean, as a pastor, I can tell you that we, but sometimes we are also thinking in that way, including me, including me. I'm thinking, you know, sometimes we are just like the priest or the Levite. Okay, they are just coming and seeing everything and they are thanking God. Oh God, I mean, thank you God that you did not do anything with me. But I mean, that person is injured and that person is wounded. I mean, nothing happened to me. I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what we are doing. I mean, but we have to understand one thing. Many times we are not ready to or we are not willing to come down from our comfort zone and from our position. And we are always trying to keep our own status we are the people always standing for our status okay i have a status and i have a position a position and i'm not ready to come down from that position hallelujah this morning let us take a decision that we are ready to come down from the comfort zone that is we are coming out of the gate hallelujah we are coming out of the gate and we are going to come forward i mean uh, from the com I mean, comfort zone and the i mean to the outside camp and do something for the name of god and for the suffering people hallelujah you know actually i have some uh, uh, ideas in mind for i mean uh, for previous few few days and i have a vision in my mind to do something uh, with the support of the uh, church i mean i would like to discuss with uh, the elders and the uh, even managers uh, of our church in the in the in this day in the coming days i mean you know i have a vision and i have a i have a, a special vision about our church and uh, the, the future of our church and also okay, what we can do for other people for the suffering people and and maybe a, a kind of charitable work uh, i mean uh, with a motive of evangelism the charitable work with a motive of evangelism. So I'm trying to, I mean, I give that ideas to you and I'm trying to impart my vision. I have already the vision. Even before coming to America, I have the vision and I have, I mean, we have the vision and that vision I'm trying to impart to you also so that you can also be a fruitful vessel for the kingdom of God in, in all the possible ways. Hallelujah. You know, uh, that idea, me, my idea is, uh, I mean, we can do some uh, kind of a food drive or something, food drive. So I believe it is possible with us in this lockdown situation. The food drive, we can do the food drive as a charitable work. And with that, we can, we can evangelize the people. So we can do that. Even though, you know, uh, 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 even though uh, I know that when I'm saying this, uh, uh, you are just thinking about the record for oh, pastor, uh, uh, is it possible? Pastor, what are, what are we uh, going to do uh, in this pandemic uh, uh, or uh, the lockdown situation? I mean, but this is the right time to do something. Let me tell you, this is the right time to do something. Hallelujah. Can I hear one? I mean for that. Amen for that. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a, you know, you know, it, it's very easy. When I when I I was preparing this message, something I mean came to, into my mind. You know, uh, it is very easy to preach inside the church. Is it right? It's very easy to preach inside the church, but not easy to go outside and do something. You know, you have to know one thing. Uh, uh, if you if you ask to our Sunday school children to preach about uh, a salvation or preach about something uh, like uh, I mean, which is connected to uh, connect to the, the, the biblical doctrine or something, they are ready to preach. The Sunday school children, they are ready to preach. Okay, they will preach maybe nicely than me, but at the same time, do you ever think that okay, if they are preaching, do they have any any practice or do they have any relation with that subject? No. For the competition, they will preach. For the competition, they will preach. Our Sunday school children, they are ready to preach for a, for a subject. But that doesn't mean that they are having that burden in their heart. Hallelujah. So it is very easy to preach inside the church. Everyone, it is very easy. Everybody can preach. Everybody can preach. Not only pastor, everybody can preach. But the main thing is, are we ready to practice what we preach? Hallelujah. You know, uh, many people in these days, in this uh, pandemic situation or the COVID-19 situation, many people are calling from uh, from India and Gulf countries and other countries. Uh, and, and, and they're saying, Pastor, uh, can you give a message in, in Facebook Live or YouTube or WhatsApp or something? That may be audio or video, whatever it may be. They're calling me and saying, uh, can you, can you give, me, give me a message, voice message or video message? Can you, can you speak something from the word of God, Facebook Live? That we will announce your name and we will publish your photo in the social media. You know what is my answer? I said, I said like this, I'm trying to minimize the preaching. I'm trying to minimize the preaching. I'm, I'm, I'm talking with you from my heart. Hallelujah. I'm trying to minimize the preaching. Stop preaching. Minimize the time of preaching and more focusing to do something in action. Hallelujah. Always, what is happening in Christendom, in our churches, you know, I mean, there are many preachers. The people are ready to preach inside the church, but are they ready to go outside and do something for the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. This is what I was also encouraged, I mean, by the message that we heard last Sunday, last Sunday that, I mean, man of God was preaching and I was also increased by that word. Hallelujah. You know, most of the time we are comforted or satisfied with some songs or, I mean, singing some songs or praying loudly in the congregation and putting some offering and tithe for the church and something else. We are so happy. We are comforted. And we are, in a, we are in a safe zone. Do you think that you are in a safe zone? Okay, sometimes we are praising God. Oh God, we thank you for giving all these things and providing all these things. And we are very much, I mean, I mean, enjoying in the presence of God, I mean, whatever we received. But this morning, my question is, are we ready to go outside the camp? Are we ready to go outside the camp? Can we do something for the suffering people? Can we do something for the people, those who are under the bondages of sin? Can you share something to those people? Hallelujah. But remember, we, if we do not have the burden for the suffering people and for the, I mean, I mean, perishing people and the people, those who are still living under the bondages of sin and Satan or the world, or, I mean, I mean, I mean remember that our worship and our prayer or our Christian life is useless. Hallelujah. Most of the time, we think that, okay, when we praise, and, I mean, when we do the praise and worship, and when we clap our hands, I mean, and when we, when we, when we preach, or when we pray, I mean, when we read the Bible, or when we, I mean, listen to the word of God, okay, God is happy, and God is pleased with that. No, we are doing that at the same time, we should have a burden for the suffering people. We should have the burden for the people, those who are still in bondage, hallelujah, because we are the called People called out people by God, not only to sing songs, not only to clap your hands, not only to pray, not only worship, hallelujah, a specific purpose. I mean, about each believer is mentioned in, in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. You read that verse also. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. But you, are, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We are called and chosen by God to proclaim what? To proclaim what? Let me hear from you. To proclaim what? The praise of him. Amen. In, in some translation it is written, it is not the praise, but it is the excellencies of God. Hallelujah. We are the called out people from the bondages, from the darkness, to proclaim not only the praise of God, but also the excellencies of God. What is the excellency of God? What is the excellency of God? Is it that God, I mean, gave us a car or, or a house or a job or healing something? You know, most of the time we are, I mean, praising God because we got a car. Sometimes we are praising God because we got a house. We got a job. We got a healing from our sickness. You know, but excellency means how can do the things. I mean, I mean, he can do the things that any of the mighty people of this world cannot do. I mean, God can do something which I mean the, the worldly people, the worldly mighty people cannot do. For example, you know, if you are sick, if you are sick, go to your doctor. I mean, consult with the doctor, and he will give you the medicine. He can cure you. He can the, the medicine can cure you. I mean, and suppose you don't uh, you don't have a money, uh, uh, but you want to. I mean, you need to you need to get a car, or you need to get a house. What will you do? You don't have money. Go and get a loan from some reliable companies and get that car and that house, right? I mean, we are ready to do that. I mean, there are many possibilities and options to meet our physical and material needs. Wherever you go, you can do it and you can gain it. Okay, uh, there are many possibilities to, I mean, options to, uh, to get the physical and material needs. But there is only one option to receive the spiritual blessing that is through Jesus and to Jesus the Lord. Hallelujah. All the material things and all the I mean, physical things will be met I mean, by I mean, searching or I mean, giving the word for other people. And, and when you do something and I mean, with, the, with, the, with your health or with your wealth, you can get everything. Everything. But only through Jesus Christ you are going to get the spiritual blessings hallelujah and that is the excellency of god nobody can give you peace amen in this world nobody can give you peace nobody can give you salvation nobody can give you the eternal life only jesus can give and that is the excellency of jesus christ hallelujah of course god will provide all the material needs but that is not the big thing for god providing the material thing Providing the physical thing is not at all a big thing for God because our God is a great God, our God is an almighty God, and He can provide everything. Hallelujah. But we should testify about, I mean, His provision. No, we have to testify about His own His provision. And but remember, I mean, we should testify about His provision and the proclaim the excellency of God. Hallelujah. We are not only I mean, proclaiming, okay, God, I mean, healed me, or God, I mean, gave me a car, God gave me a job, or I mean, I mean, house, but we are proclaiming, we are calling our people to proclaim the excellency in saving the people in, from sin. Hallelujah. That is what our responsibility as a, as a believer. So remember, I mean, the call I mean, of God never leads us to prosperity of this world, but leads us to proclaim the excellence of God. Hallelujah. Remember, once we were not the people of God, but now we are the people of God and children of God. So we must proclaim that to the people outside. Hallelujah. So remember, remember, the call of God will never lead us to worldly prosperity. Hallelujah. Shall we close our eyes in the presence of God this morning? I mean, time is up and let's close our eyes in the presence of God. I mean, for a moment, hallelujah, everybody, everybody, take a decision, hallelujah, according to the word of God this morning, I mean, take a decision, oh Lord, I'm taking, I mean, I'm submitting myself for the call of God, hallelujah. The first point is, I mean, the call of God is, I mean, leading us to the outside the camp. 
outside the camp. Outside the camp means, hallelujah, we have to leave many things and we have to move forward with Jesus Christ to, to proclaim the, the, the excellency of Jesus Christ. The call of God never leads us to worldly prosperity. I mean, you don't go for the prosperity of this world. Hallelujah. God will provide every blessing upon you. I mean, whatever you need, God knows everything and he will provide every, I mean, blessings upon you. But remember, hallelujah, the spiritual blessings, the salvation, the eternal life, hallelujah. I mean, the, 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 the sanctification, I mean, hallelujah, the blessings of spiritual blessings of God, only it is possible to get through Jesus Christ, hallelujah. So whatever we are getting, are we ready to, I mean, work for the Lord? Are we ready to go outside, I mean, the camp? That means let us, I mean, give up everything. And let us, I mean, hallelujah, let us, I mean, give away everything. Keep away everything. Hallelujah. Let us, I mean, come down from the comfort zone. Let us come down from the, I mean, I mean, uh, from the, I mean, uh, uh, the, the safe zone. And let us, I mean, I mean, go outside the city, go outside the camp, go outside the religion, go outside the, I mean, I mean, worldly practices and everything. Hallelujah. Let us remember all the mercies of God and also let's proclaim the excellency of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. They, they take your decision this morning in the presence of God. Oh Lord, I'm coming to your presence, oh Lord. I need to, 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 to do, do something for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, God has blessed every one of us. Hallelujah. We are enjoying in all the blessings that we have received from the Lord. Hallelujah. At the same time, at the same time, in this lockdown situation, in this pandemic situation, what the church can do for other people, what the church can do, the suffering people, what you have with you to give to the people, those who are in bondages of sin, hallelujah, what you have to give to the people, those who are still perishing in their sin, hallelujah, so we have, we have something that is the excellency of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of this world, hallelujah, let us submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God, let us, I mean, I mean commit ourselves in the, according to the call of God. The call of God is to, I mean, I mean, leads us to outside the camp. Hallelujah. And we are going to, I mean, receive and we are going to, I mean, uh, carry or, I mean, bear the reproaches of Jesus Christ and the call of God never leads us to worldly prosperity. Hallelujah. And I have many points remaining. I'll be, I mean, preaching about all those points in later. And this morning, let us submit us with the mighty hand of God. Let's go with the, with the decision that I would do something for the sake of God. Hallelujah. It's not for our popularity. Not for the pastor's popularity, not for the believer's popularity. We are doing all these things, I mean, only for the sake of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let us surrender life in the presence of God. I request, I mean, Sister Shaila, uh, Sister Shaila, Reggie, to lead us in prayer now. Hallelujah.